Okay, welcome to another episode of Talking Metaverse with me, Tan. I am now joined by Krista Yanti from Eventually XR. Welcome, Krista. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me, Tan. You have some interesting thoughts on how AI is shaping the metaverse. So I would like to ask you, is how does AI and metaverse connect? What's the big picture that you're seeing right now? Uh, what I have seen is that the biggest bottleneck um, preventing people to uh, enter metaverse. And when I say metaverse, I usually talk about 3D spaces in the internet. Sometimes they are social, sometimes they are not. But depending, of course, how do you define metaverse? But still, the, the biggest bottleneck is uh, the lack of 3D asset. So people really don't have that much. If they are not a gaming house, they don't have 3D assets. So if you are going to have a 3D space, whether it's going to be in virtual reality, augmented reality, or in the browser, uh, you need to have a 3D character. You need to have an environment. You need to have lights and all those kind of things. and generated AI is, is coming to rescue now because it's going to be easier and easier to create those assets. And when, when people are starting to use these tools, so that's why I say AI is shaping the metaverse experiences because with generative tools, you actually can create with the prompts, environments, characters, uh, uh, flat backgrounds, and, and those kinds of things. They are starting to come now. Okay. All right, before we start, actually, let's get a definition of metaverse. Do you, because you, you mentioned a few things and then you said it depends how you define it. So how do you define the metaverse in one sentence? One sentence. Um, 3D internet is kind of my, my version of, of metaverse. So like if you it. think about now we live it in in two D spaces, pretty much two D screens. So I believe that three uh, D is just literally another dimension to that. So the internet that you can step into, that you can go into, go into whether it's going to be with the uh, ASVD uh, moving with the with the with the arrow keys or uh, with the mouse, or uh, you put goggles on virtual headset on, and then you start using using your controllers. So those kind of 3D spaces, or of course, uh, augmented layer with uh, the with, um, mobile phone. So that's also included. Okay. And uh, now with your consulting company, are there any patterns in the problems that you're solving? Like what, what kind of challenges and questions are most common when it comes to this XR space? Uh, it's usually where do I start? Uh, it's it's hard to think if you are, uh, if the customer is not having, uh, well, let's put it this way. If the customer is, is hasn't been uh, in the gaming uh, gaming in industry or haven't even, even tried virtual reality or have it tried only once, it's hard to imagine what works in the 3D space and what does not. Uh, the worst thing, uh, what I've seen that uh, you create a 3D space and then you take the real world assets uh, as they are, uh, copy the real world, uh, putting uh, posters, 2D posters, a lot of text, almost like slides inside the 3D space. It's going to be so boring experience and it's, it's uh, uh, 2D texts don't even work in the 3D space. So that's where I start that don't copy the real world as we see it uh, into the 3D space. It's not going to be an interesting experience. Try something different. Uh, go to try games, uh, how they pe how people are guided inside the game, highlighting things. Can you interact it, interact? with the elements or not, just a little bit text, make it interesting, create the storytelling, bring us something, uh, elements that 
are not in the real world. You can have floating elements and, and those kind of things. So I'm trying to give examples what you can actually do and 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 <laughs> what you shouldn't do. Mm. And you say that for some people it might not be the time yet. So what kind of companies do you think it's suitable, the time is right, and what kind of companies would you say the time is not yet? Uh, the companies that... Uh, do a lot of marketing with uh, with the younger groups. I don't see any any reason why they shouldn't they should try this and they should be in the space definitely. And uh, the more conservative your your audience is, uh, the more challenging it is. For example, if I I, I talked about different demographic groups, um, my age people usually they want to want to copy the real world as it is and uh, have uh, may, maybe more watch videos than than actually go into the space and and maybe not that ready to interact with other people in the same 3D space so more like having a little bit distance to the metaverse thing and it feels safer to copy the real world and uh, than going to uh, I don't know the fantasy world with uh, with the pink bubbles and all kind of funny stuff. So it really depends how conservative the audience is. What mm. you should do. What do you think about some of the criticisms or the concerns about how we will humans will connect a little bit less because of this? It will stay. You know, we're gonna just. Our avatars will be connecting, but we will not have physical connection. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm actually a bit worried about that because uh, we see that we live with our screens uh, more hours every day. And it's the evolution has been very fast how much we actually interact with our phones instead of having an interaction with real humans. And now when uh, AI friends are stepping into the picture, uh, AI girlfriend, uh, the uh, Karen Marjorie AI, which is her AI girlfriend, and there have been many those kind of things. That mm. are we going to choose artificial intelligence uh, driven friends over real people because mm. it's so easy easy to interact with artificial mm. intelligence instead of real people. So we have to be careful also and understand where where this might take us in the future. Overall, what should we do? What should we can? What can we actively rem remind ourselves? Well, um, what I want to have more discussions like we are having these days is that more and more people are going to understand. Well, the technology might take us into the dark side or into more positive side. So we have to understand what we have on the table so we can actively pick that we want to go this direction. We don't want to go this direction. And these companies are working to take our to the this direction. Uh, what we could do, uh, of course, legislation always lag, lags behind. But we want, of course, that, that more technology would help us to become better humans and not become like more isolated, more lonely, more, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, just live in our our flats and not not seeing anyone outside. Yeah, so mm, you're saying what well, if we want to actively do something? It's try to have more conversation like like this in order to see the thing for what it is, so that we can make conscious choices rather than not recognize it, not notice it, and then be. Yeah, you know, just go away. with the flow and something happens and then it's too late to change the direction. Excellent. Now, you were recently voted to be a part of the global 100, top 100 women of the future in emerging tech. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What does that mean? Well, I've been overwhelmed. I'm very honored that I was actually chosen to be in the book. There are very big names are going to be in on the book. And then me. Well, I didn't even even suggest myself to be in the book, but some other people found me and they suggested that that, that I should be in the book. And then they said that I should have uh, should found people to vote me to be 
in the book and I asked two of my friends that please could you vote me and I was like no I can't ask I so many people to vote me but actually the best happened that somebody else that I don't know have voted me to be in the book so I'm very honored that that the audience have, have voted voted Excellent. me exciting so it's a book about women in tech and the future of tech yes Emerging tech, though, so AI, uh, extended reality, blockchain, IoT, all those kind of great women. Okay, and then let me quickly ask you about your the beginning of your journey into tech. So were you always in XR or did you start somewhere else and then come into it? Oh, that's, that's a great question. I've always been very... Um, interested in how everything works so originally i'm actually a cell biologist and then i get more into coding uh, i wanted to understand how internet works so I, I i i learned something from the internet and then i know i need to get in the into the computer science and and i started study computer science graduated as a microbiologist but then then cut into coding uh, did uh, did coding work then i got more interested in in user interfaces and psychology behind what what makes the user stick then got to be as a user experience designer and having done so many 2D interfaces, user interfaces, I wanted to know more about 3D spaces. Virtual reality was something new still in the 2017. And that's how I, I, I started to search job market in the virtual reality and got in the very exciting company of Vario, the Finnish VR headset company. Of and course. that's where I started my journey towards 3D spaces. Wow, you are a true inspiration, not just for women, for me also. Like the, the, the fact that you can start somewhere and then just follow your interests and not worry about changing direction and just keep growing. And don't yeah. forget, you didn't mention t some other of your interests. Breakdancing, tell me a little bit about the hip hop <laughs> background. Well, actually, uh, my, my journey towards computer science started from dancing because I had a dancing group and we needed uh, more more shows, more gig, more money. So I was like, how do I make actually home pages? Back then there were not Squarespace or VIX or something like you can just have a template and build a website. No, you actually have to start learning HTML and JavaScript to make, make those home pages. So that was my inspiration that being a dancer, I love hip hop dance dancing and and wanted wanted to uh tell the world that our we have this great dancing group and i started to make home pages for our dancing group and <laughs> that got okay, me into, so, into computer science <laughs> so cell therapy cell biology hip-hop dancing html web design ui coding <laughs> coding ui 3d and now xr and ai yeah. Now going back to more and more coding because uh, you know in order to be able to run Python scripts, I have gone back more in the, into coding now. So it all comes comes some some way together. Beautiful, Krista. Thank you so much. That was a really fun conversation. I hope we can do this again. <laughs> thank you, Tan, for once again for inviting me. <laughs>